follow me to the headmistress office. When we reach there, you'll explain yourself, the matron told Abina. Abena could only blink back tears, feeling a wave of disbelief wash over her. It, it's not mine, she stuttered. Tell that to the headmistress, the matron said, her eyes narrowed with disdain. It was barely 5 a.m., and Abina, who hadn't slept a bit since the previous night's incident, felt very sleepy. She had barely had a chance to rest, and her mind raced in different directions. As she walked towards the headmistress' office, silence fell over the dormitory floor. The girls, all in their crisp uniforms, stared at Abena. Some looked at her with disgust, some with pity, others with a profound sense of shock. Abena was the star girl of their class. She was not only beautiful, but intelligent. She was kind and compassionate, a role model for many. But today, her self-worth felt like a fragile piece of glass, shattered by the weight of accusation. She knew deep down that there was only one way her punishment was going to go. And to make it worse, she was being accused of something she hadn't done. She could only imagine the disappointment on her father's face when he finds out what she had done. The shame weighed heavily on Abena's mind. Should she tell the truth about what happened the night before? About Shalewa and Amina? And their plan? Abena wondered, knowing that if she told the truth, it would look like she was truly involved. At the headmistress's office, Abina broke down in tears, falling to her knees. Miss Pamela, please, you have to believe me. It's not mine, she pleaded. Miss Pamela, the headmistress, with her sharp gaze and even sharper tongue, sat behind her desk looking at Abina. Her face was unreadable. She wondered what could have led Abina to do such a thing. Abina was the most brilliant student in St. Anne's Girls Boarding School, a Catholic school that demanded only the best from its students. Parents whose wards attended the school wouldn't stop bragging about it. The school promised to transform young girls into strong, capable women, ready to conquer the world. However, like many students, Abena came from a very poor family. Her father, a hard-working mechanic who toiled tirelessly to make ends meet, made immense sacrifices to ensure his first daughter, Abena received the best education the town could offer. He often said, My daughter, I didn't get an education, but I want you to have the best, so you can be anything you want to be. For this reason, when Abena finally got into St. Anne's, her father was so happy, he danced and celebrated like he'd just won the lottery. When Abena resumed, she was eager to learn everything. She was a fast learner, a real bookworm. After school, while the other girls would go hang out, Abina would stay back in class or the library, burying her nose in her books. She loved reading, loved studying. Whenever she was in class, she would sit in front of the class and her answers were always correct. It was like she had all the answers. Her teachers would ask questions and she'd be the first to shout out the answer. Always right. She was the smartest in her class and she even represented the school at competitions, winning a few. Her teachers respected her, and she was proud of how much she was achieving. Then, one day, things changed. After their midterm break, everyone was gathered at the assembly for a big announcement. The school announced that they would no longer be paying for textbooks and practical expenses for students. They told everyone to call their parents and inform their wards of the new development. Any student who didn't take the necessary practicals and textbooks, they could miss their exams. This news spread like wildfire and everyone was whispering. Many students, like Abina who came from poor families, couldn't afford the new expenses. The school was facing financial problems. After a fire destroyed their new science lab, they had no choice but to make these stringent changes. Abina was very worried her heart sank. She wasn't sure her parents could come up with the money in such a short time. 
I can't tell Mama, she thought to herself. She'll worry herself sick. She might even borrow money to help, and I don't want that. As Abena sat on her bed, lost in thought, Shalewa, her bunkmate and classmate, walked into the room. She saw that Abena wasn't her usual cheerful self. Abena, you missed the dinner bell, what happened? Abena sighed. It's about the new announcement. My parents don't have that kind of money. Shalewa chuckled a bit, but Abena didn't find it funny. She looked at Shalewa confused. Why are you laughing? What's so funny? Shalewa looked at her and smiled. I don't have the money either, but I'll get it by the weekend. Abina was even more confused, but she brushed it off. Thinking that Shalewa's parents would send some money to her by the weekend, she got even more sad. The idea of not being able to write her exams terrified her. As the week passed, Abina's worry grew. She called her uncle, but he didn't respond. When she finally decided to call home, her mother informed her that her father was in the hospital. He had a little incident at his workshop. On hearing that, Abina didn't bother bringing up her own problems. Abina was feeling hopeless. It seemed like the world was against her. She didn't know what to do. Every break time, She'd go and sit alone under a tree at the back of the school and cry. She was all alone with her worries. One afternoon, as she sat there crying, Shalewa came up to her. Why are you crying? You still haven't got the money? Come with me and Amina on Friday. We can look for our money together. What do you mean? I thought your parents were going to give you the money, Abina asked. Shalewa laughed. My parents can't give me any money. I take care of myself. You coming or not? Abena thought about it for a second. Okay, I'm coming, she said. She was desperate. Friday came, and the girls went about their day as usual. At night, when it was time for bed, Shalewa and Amina waited for the hostel matron to finish checking the rooms. Then they tiptoed to Abena's bed and woke her up. It's time. Get dressed. Shalewa said. Abina was still sleepy, but she got up and put on her clothes. Shalewa and Amina were carrying a small backpack, and Abina's eyes caught it, but she didn't think anything of it as she quickly followed them. As they got closer to the school fence, Abina started feeling uneasy. She saw that the girls were going through the back fence, where there was a broken spot in the barbed wire. It was just big enough for them to squeeze through. Wait! Abina hesitated. This is not right. Shalewa, who had already snuck through the barbed wire, turned back and gave Abina a very sharp look. Shh! Your voice is loud, Shalewa whispered. The thought of breaking a school rule, especially a big one such as leaving the premises through the back fence, made Abina feel uncomfortable. She was not one to disobey the rules but she needed the money very badly. So, together with Shalewa and Amina, she snuck through the back fence and went outside the school premises. Once they were outside, under the shroud of darkness, both girls quickly opened the small bag and changed their school uniforms. Take this and wear it, Shalewa told Abena, handing her a dress. Abena joined them, putting on the dress. She noticed that the dress was very short, too short for her. Shalewa and Amina started laughing loudly. It was the first time they weren't whispering since they left their dormitory. They looked at Abina's alarmed face and smiled to themselves. I know you feel very uncomfortable, but you look very beautiful in the dress. Trust me, if I had half your beauty, I will not complain for money anymore, Amina said, giggling. Abina was shocked. She felt like she had walked into a nightmare. What had she gotten herself into? They kept walking until they reached the main road, where a car picked them up. Where are we going? Abina asked. Her heart was beating very hard, and her palms was beginning to sweat. Shalewa turned and looked at her again, but this time, she just shrugged. You'll see. The car drove into an exclusive bar, 
quite hidden from the main road, but not too far from the school. Shalwa and Amina led the way to a table at the back of the bar, where a group of men were drinking and smoking. The men looked old enough to be their fathers, but Shalewa and Amina smiled and talked to them like they were their friends. The smell of alcohol and cigarettes filled the air, making Abina's stomach churn. The men's eyes followed her every move. They stared at her body a little too long, making her skin crawl. She felt so exposed, so vulnerable in that short dress. She knew this wasn't just a friendly hangout. Something wasn't right. Amina rushed to one of the men and sat on his lap. Shalewa then took Abena's hand and walked towards another man who was sitting a little away from the rest. As they approached him, Shalewa quickly placed a condom packet in Abena's hand. They were in a row. Abena quickly withdrew her hand in shock. I am sorry, I think I have made a mistake, she said sharply. What do you mean? Shalewa asked. I am not sure I can do this. Abena replied, her voice trembling. Shalewa's face softened, and she leaned in close. Listen, Abena, you have come this far already. If you back out now, you won't get the money you came for. Think about it. No, Shalewa, this is wrong. I shouldn't have come here, Abena said as she began stepping backwards. Don't cause a scene here, Abena, Shalewa warned. But... Abena didn't say anything. She just threw the packet of condoms back at Shalewa's face and started to run towards the door. Shalewa was furious. She wanted to chase after Abena, but she had already disappeared from the scene. Abena kept running until she got to the school fence. She stopped, changed back into her uniform, and then slipped back inside, feeling a mix of relief and fear. At the bar, Shalewa called Amina over and told her what Abena had done. We have to silence her. No one can know our secret, Shalewa said angrily. But how? My mother cannot find out that this is what I do. Amina was scared. Can you imagine? This is someone I was trying to help. Psst. Leave that to me, Shalewa replied, her eyes gleaming with a cold intensity. As Abina crept back to her room and her bed, she couldn't stop thinking about how she had almost gotten into trouble. Just because she was scared to ask her parents for money, she decided that she would rather explain to the headmistress and drop out rather than sell her body for some textbooks. She couldn't believe Shalewa and Amina would even consider doing something like this. She thought it only happened in the movies. As she kept thinking, she drifted off to sleep. Very early the next morning, all the girls on their dormitory floor were forced awake by a very loud bell. The porters and matrons shouted at the top of their voices for all the students to stand up. The matron's phone had been stolen. By this time, Shalewa and Amina had returned, although it was clear they hadn't slept much. Before Abena could process what was happening, Two matrons barged into their room and began searching their bags. One of the matrons got to Abina's bedside, grabbed her bag, and emptied the contents on the bed. The pack of condoms that Shalewa had given her the night before fell out with her other things. As they saw it, the matrons gasped in shock. What is this? One of them shouted. The matron dragged Abina away to explain herself to the headmistress. The other girls watched in shock as she was dragged away. The news spread quickly. At Miss Pamela's office, Abina kept crying, pleading that the pack of condoms wasn't hers. She thought of telling Miss Pamela, the headmistress, about the previous night, but then she knew that would make it worse. As she was on her knees pleading, to her shock, Shalewa was called into the office as Abina's bunkmate to vouch for her. At first, seeing Shalewa made Abina's mind relax a bit. She felt that since Shalewa was a smart girl, she would have a nice excuse that would save her. But to her surprise, Shalewa twisted the story. She told Miss Pamela that she had seen the condom packet with Abina the day before. 
She also said that Abina had snuck out of the room after lights out, only to return by 2 a.m. that very morning. At that point, there was nothing Abina could say to defend herself. She felt defeated. Shalewa words was the final nail in the coffin. She painted a picture of Abina as a deceitful girl. Miss Pamela was furious, even though she felt deep down that Abina, being an intelligent student, was not supposed to break the law. She needed to uphold the integrity of St. Anne's College and its moral standards. She considered this act intolerable and expressed her displeasure. As punishment, she declared that Abina be expelled immediately from St. Anne's Girls Secondary School. But this was just the beginning of Abina's journey.